So Mike, would you say it's safe to say you've tasted teas the world over? I think that's pretty safe to say, Charlie, yes. So at Christmas time, we put, purchased some fine teas from Fortnum & Mason, and today we have the greatest selection of wild teas for you to taste and give us your thoughts on. So in front of you, Mike, you have the classic wild teas range from Fortnum & Mason. Uh, from left to right, we have a Rwanda orange peco. Uh, the next one along in the blue tin we have is a Darjeeling finest tippy golden flowery orange peco. The green tin is Assam Tippy Golden Flowery Orange Peco. Then the first pink tin there, the slightly duller one, is the Rose Pouchong. And then the last one we have is the Jasmine Pearls Green Tea. So please let us know your review. Indeed. Right, well now you see the way they're laid out. So like any tea taster, when he's, when he's assessing any tea, he'll have the dry leaf to look at, because that's important, obviously, particularly with these speciality teas. He'll have the infused leaf, which um, can tell him a lot, because if you smell it, often if there's a fault or something, it comes out very clearly on the infused leaf. And he also needs to look at the, the, the infused leaf for brightness and evenness, and then finally the liquor. So if we start with the Rwandan orange pecker, um, that's a very nice black, um, well-twisted leaf, and there's a little tip in it. Uh, the infused leaf is very bright and coppery and even, and the liquor, it has good colour and strength. It's got a smooth character, and, um, and really, I think, you know, I know quite a bit about Rwanda teas, and I think that's, uh, that's a very good example. Of a, of a good Rwanda, which is now also used in the base of a number of um, top quality blends. We then move on to the Darjeeling, the flowery tippy golden orange pecker, and again, you look at the leaf, which is blackish, even, quite well twisted. It's a little uneven, but um, that can happen. And the infused leaf, you can smell the Darjeeling character in that. Even, even, even infusion. Nice, typical Darjeeling character. Um, that, that's got that lovely musket hint in it. It's called the champagne of tea and one can see why. Um, very bright in the cup. Attractive tea. Now, Sam Tippy, golden flowery orange pecker. Again, very good leaf, well twisted. A little, a little tip in that. Infused leaf is a lovely, deep copper colour, even, even, very even in appearance. And the liquor, as you'd expect, is just nice, strong, multi character, typical again of a good Assam, and um, and really very attractive and typical of its type, and of, and, and of very good quality. And then we come on to what I would call the more speciality teas, the. Um, the Rose Pouchon, which is basically um, a black china tea um, with rose petals. And rose, rose mixes very well with tea, it's a natural bedfellow. It looks attractive, it's got a lovely smell to it. And when you go to the infused leaf, again you can pick up the rose quite, quite easily. But it's a good base tea, so you, it's very important to have a good quality tea when you're putting flavouring in. A lot of people think because it's flavoured, the quality of the tea doesn't matter, and it does, because what you're tasting is the tea, which is just enhanced by the addition of whatever you're putting in. In this case, it's rose. Rose petals. And they come through beautifully in the liquor. You can just taste them just that lovely fragrance that, that rose petals give. Uh, again, um, which just enhances the quality of that uh, very fine china tea. And then finally the jasmine pearls, which is, uh, I have to say, one of my favourites. All hand rolled uh, green tea with, um, with jasmine flower. And of course, when it's unfurled, you see, you can see the whole leaf, the whole leaf and the bud. I mean, that, that's fabulous. And that, is, that, you know, to have those rolled into tight balls is quite a work of art. There's a lot of skill in that involved. Oh, the smell of jasmine is lovely. And again, a good green tea is important. Um, I've tasted many over the years. Sometimes the green tea is not that good and, 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 and the pearl, uh, the uh, jasmine has been a bit too heavy and it just certainly unbalances and distorts the whole thing. This, the balance is absolutely right. 
nice quality green tea, that lovely injection of, of, of jasmine, which just gives it that wonderful fragrance and makes it a very refreshing cup of tea. So there you have it, a very interesting range. Something for everybody, you can say. Um, I love them all and I could drink them all at any time. So is, is, are these teas, are they up to the quality you'd expect from Fortnum and Mason? Yes, I think absolutely. They have got a reputation and you can see why. No, they're, 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 they're all of a very good quality. Um, attractively presented and uh, a delight to taste. And if you were to rate them all from one to 10 individually, how would you rate them all? Oh, they've all got to be very near the 10. I mean, one could be picky, but um, I think really, uh, I think, the one, fun enough, and I think when I tasted it once before, the one that one feels probably could have been a bit better, but again, it's what was available at the time because it's a seasonal thing, was the Darjeeling. But don't get me wrong, it's, it's still a very good Darjeeling. Um, but no, they're, they're all very good, and they've all got to be eight plus, no doubt about it. And of, of all these teas in front of you, which is your personal favourite? Well, for very different reasons. I mean, I love them all, but as Jasmine Pearls is just very special. Um, I often make it on a hot summer's afternoon, make a pot of that and drink it on my own, and it is so refreshing. Um, cold drinks wouldn't have refreshed nearly long, long enough. That will go on refreshing, it is, and it is just a joy. But there again, the Rwanda's very good, and Rose you drink and again, rather like the Jasmine, at a different time. So to pick out one there is very difficult. I could drink them all at certain times without any hesitation. So say if you're going to create a tea routine through the day, at which point would you drink which teas? Well, you start, I think, with an Assam because it's called thick, rich tea, isn't it? And um, it's a sort of wake me up. Or perhaps you have that for early morning tea and then you perhaps go on to something else for breakfast. Um, then um, afternoon tea, well, Darjeeling, of course, is a winner. All the others really would be perfect for afternoon tea. So I think it's a Sam in the morning and all the others in the afternoon, really. Or, and, and again, late at night, perhaps a nice jasmine pearl would, would just relax you, ready for uh, a good night's sleep. So, yes, there's something for everyone. This is the joy of tea. It, 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 it caters for all tastes and all occasions. Brilliant. Well, thank you, Mike. Thanks for your time. Pleasure, Charlie. Thank you.